on a beautiful early autumn evening. The windless Panthers of William Tennant invade War Memorial Field to take on the once defeated Bucks of CB West. The Panthers looking for the big upset. The Bucks looking for one more win to take them on the road to the state title that they once held. Stay tuned to Suburban Community Television Football next. Suburban Community Television presents Suburban One High School Football. Tonight, the William Tennant Panthers take on the Bucks of Central Bucks West here at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Friedman. Along with me, as always, my partner, Tom White. Tom, two contrasting teams. William Tennant, of course, coming into the uh, game tonight 0-5. Have not won a game yet, but a very spirited football team. And the Bucks, of course, stung by that one defeat to Norristown. Came back and won big against Ben Salem last week. A good Ben Salem team, 27 to nothing. What do we look for tonight, Tommy? Well, with our uh, pregame show here, we got Villa Capri is going to sponsor this for us. We, uh, I look for Tennant to really be tough. They've really done a good job of uh, playing defense. They've lost two close games despite being 0-5. And, and we'll get back to the opening kickoff. Don't go away. For years, the friendly and knowledgeable staff of Gem Jewelers has been helping you select the finest jewelry for all of life's important events. Now, Gem Jewelers has moved both of their stores to one expanded location on Route 611 at Bristol Road. Inside, you'll find a spacious new showroom with one of the largest selections in the area. You'll find great values on their large selection of diamond engagement rings, watches, and designer jewelry. Their new line of porcelain figurines make great gifts, too. They do all of their own work, and a graduate gemologist is always on hand. So for all this and the same great prices, stop in at Gem Jewelers. The Callow Hill Collection of Country Furniture is handmade in our own shop. We offer a wide variety of items available in a choice of five stains, five paints, or combinations thereof. And entertainment cabinets are a specialty. If you need yours taller, shorter, wider, deeper, then you should look into ours. See furniture for the way you live at prices you can live with. The Callow Hill Collection at the Dry Sink, Route 202, New Britain. Carousel Flowers. A beautiful shop. Filled with fresh flowers. Flowers that last. A single stem. A splendid arrangement. Straight from the heart. Carousel Flowers. A wedding bouquet. A basket of fruit. Plants of all kinds. Port Marion. Plush animals. Balloons. They show that you care. Carousel Flowers. A Doylestown landmark. On Route 202. A friendly shop. With local deliveries. FTD. Flowers for all seasons. Flowers for all reasons. Carousel Flowers. Choosing the right college is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make, and the right choice may be closer than you think. Delaware Valley College offers Bachelor of Science degrees in Agriculture, Business Administration, Computers, and Science. DelVal features small class sizes and hands-on learning opportunities. Get involved in a multitude of activities or just have fun with new friends on DelVal's picturesque campus. Delaware Valley College. For more information or a brochure, call 345-1500. There are lots of organizations working for the high quality of life our families enjoy here in Bucks County. I'm Sandy Spratt from Bucks County Bank. We're proud to be the bank that actively supports all these community groups, services, and institutions. Why does Bucks County Bank invest in all these community organizations? Because Bucks County is much more than our name, it's also our home. sponsored by KMC Sports, official licensed sports apparel dealer. Kicker goes to Paul Lizzie at his own 10 yards line line as the uh, 
Panthers will get the opening kickoff, but they won't go far as he's only able to return it out to the 23-yard line where Tennant will put it into play. Eric Kelly, real nice job, stays in his lane, comes down, takes Lizzie off his feet. Lizzie comes in having some big numbers offensively for Tennant, hit their offensive threat along with uh, senior quarterback uh, Greenberg, who's really had a terrific uh, scholastic career at William Tennant. Backfield will be Kevin Greenberg, and the backs are in the eye as Julian Eichert is up front. Oh, excuse me, that's Lizzie. Max carrying the ball is Paul Lizzie, and they'll get it out over the 25 to about the 27 yard line. The Panthers will be in the white uniforms, black numerals, red stripes on their sleeves, and of course the Bucks in their normal home uniform, the Killer B uniforms, the black jerseys with the gold lettering and the gold pants. Gain of about three on the play, make it second down, seven yards to go. Greenberg, an excellent, as you mentioned, an experienced quarterback. Coming wide out to the right side, Jeff Overberger. Well, the backs are split behind Greenberg. And there's a jump off sides. Now, I don't know if they were drawn or not. It could have been a long count, could have been a head bob. Let's see what we have. It looks like nobody moved on the offensive line. They're going to get together and talk about it, will the officials? And it is offside on the buck, so it'll give them five more yards, make it second down, three yards to go. And these are the things that, that Mike Pettin's been talking about. His team, uncharacteristically this year, has been hurting themselves with penalties. Uh, and he, he's been driving to, to stop that. They did it well again, they did it well last week. But right away, they jump off sides. And an inexperienced quarterback will do that to yeah, you, Yeah, I was going to say, he same knows what thing. to do. Greenberg does a nice job there to go on a two count and, and draw him off. Now, instead of having second, or yeah, second and two, they got, or second and seven, and one. Deep handoff goes uh, to the tailback, Eichert. And Eichert, the first down out over the 35, or to the 35 yard line. And that is where Tennant will put it in play again. They get a fresh four. So with the aid of that penalty, William Tennant has the first down. First and 10 ball at their own 35 yard line, just underway. Glad you could join us for the Suburban One League tussle between William Tennant and Central Bucks West. West has the services of Jeff Gugasol back at linebacker. Uh, the last time we got to see West play, he was injured. So it's good to see him back in the lineup. Backs again in the eye, behind Greenberg. Almost jumping offside was Tennant. The handoff goes to Paul Lizzie. Lizzie takes it up for about four, yard four yards to the 39-yard line. Make it second down, six yards to go. Very feisty on the defensive line of uh, the Bucks. They seem to be anticipating the count. Almost got a ca uh, caught off sides there as well. Yeah, they're going to move around. They're going to slant a lot, and they are very quick. So one thing the tenant's going to try to do is run against the slant back to the short side of the field as they did there and get four yards on first down as they did. So nice little start for William Tennant. Second down, six yards to go. Ball at the 39-yard line. Backs are split. And the quick handoff goes to Lizzie. Lizzie will get about two. He'll take it out over the 40 to the 41-yard line. A beautiful night for football. The foliage is gorgeous all over the Bucks in Montgomery County area. I'd say game time temperature probably around 62, 63 degrees. No real wind to speak of. The flag hanging straight down. And it is just a spectacular night for football the crowd wearing white jackets for the most part and it, it's perfect night for football Bill Lantham on the tackle the last play from his linebacker spot big third down play here for Tennant third and four back split long count by Greenberg he's gonna go back to throw his first ball and he completes it for the first down to Jeff Overberger a simple looking pass and Overberger comes in tonight, Bob. He's got a 12 receptions, 137 yards, about 10th in the, in, the, in the area. So he goes to his number one guy and gets a first down. A nice little play, high percentage, and really does a nice job of getting to him quick. First and 10 for Tennant. Now Tennant has the senior uh, Greenberg quarterback. The other skill positions are a man mostly by underclassmen. Overberger uh, is a junior. 
and Lizzie is a junior, and uh, Eichert is also a junior, and it's Eichert who carries the ball. Julian Eichert, he'll get short yardage about two yards. So Pennant building for the future, taking the lumps a little bit this year. And they also have, interestingly enough, Overberger is listed in the program as a quarterback. So you got to think that he may be a future quarterback on this team as well when uh, Greenberg leaves. Two-yard gain with 7.30 to go in the first quarter. No score. Tennant has the ball, first possession of the game, and they are now inside Buck territory at the 49-yard line. Backs in the eye, Overberger in motion, right to left. Pitch goes to Eichert. Oh, and he's smashed down on a great tackle by Todd Volaitis. Volaitis has been a force. I tell you, I was at the Abington, uh, Abington game a couple weeks ago when they played uh, CB East. And I was talking to some of the different coaches who were there. Russ Mitchell, defensive coordinator, was talking about West. And we talked about some of the one of the great games that some of the uh, defensive people have had for the Bucks. He said Volaitis is the best of them. Well, he's a big, strong kid, really does a nice job from his end spot, outside contained, great burst into the backfield to take the back down for a big loss. All right, off the shotgun, back to pass, and he's going to roll right with Greenberg. He throws across, looking for a man, and coming back nicely and making the catch, doing a great job of coming back on the play, was George Hernandez. Won't get much yardage, but he did what a receiver is taught to do. Really did a nice job. He's just running a little flat pattern. Williamson has him covered as the ball is approaching him. He takes a two and a half yard step to the ball and catches it, goes out of bounds. Doesn't get the first down, but it does a nice job. And you gotta give Tennant credit. Two first downs on this first job. They got a punt here and they got a bad snap. Bad snap and it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, Central Bucks West ball. They, they were trying to uh, fake punt. They were trying to, uh, to snap it back to uh, Paul Lizzy trying to catch him off guard, but they didn't. It was a bad snap. Well, I don't think Lizzy knew what the play was because it looked like the ball came back and hit him right in the middle, not expecting the ball. So maybe he wasn't aware that it was a fake punt. And nonetheless, West takes over. And that hurts because after those two first downs, they moved the ball. They would have had pretty good put West back with a decent punt. Ben Snyder, a quarterback with the backs in the eye. And he'll hand it off to Billy Lowe, and Lowe gets six, seven yards on the carry. So the first offensive play, a good one for the Bucks as they went over the left side of the line, they'll gain seven, make it second and three. Ran over right behind Billy Lantham, number 66. You see it right there, coming right into your screen is Billy Lowe, and you see them carrying their blocks out well, making second down, three yards to go. Ball at the 42-yard line of Tennant. 5.40 to go, first quarter, no score. Backs again in the eye. Snyder hands off to Lowe, good seal on the left side, gets close to the first down, does Bill Lowe. He's gonna probably have it, they may measure for it, but based on the spot, I would say he's got the first down. And they're gonna move the sticks without a measurement. First down for CB West. Linebacker Brian Wolfgang, sophomore, Comes up, makes a nice play, stops him for a little game, but he does get enough for the first down. And I'll tell you, that, that fake punt really hurt him because, Bob, they would have got a decent punt. They could have put West back in uh, some tough field position. And I think you're right. I don't, I don't know if he, he, that he knew the play. It looked like he just wasn't ready for the snap. First and 10, Snyder rolling right to pass. He's chased, hit as he throws. Got a man wide open down to the five-yard line. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Dave Roberts with a reception on the touchdown for CB West. And as he was hit, Snyder threw the ball. He put it right on the money. And we've seen Snyder get better and better as the season goes on. Last, last time we saw him play, really did a nice job uh, of getting the ball up the field. There he gets Roberts on the run while he's on the run, hits him in stride. And Roberts does a nice job of running it into the end zone after, after the catch. So a 39-yard touchdown pass from Ben Snyder to Dave Roberts makes it 6-0 CB West. And now for the extra point, it'll be Jonathan Yencha. Snap good, placement good, kick up, and it's good. 
So, Yanks' extra point makes it seven to nothing. With 4.54 to go in the first quarter, it's the Bucks who hit with a lightning quick pass. Take the lead, seven to nothing. Just a sprint rollout for Schneider. Tries to find Roberts, who's just running a slam right across the field. Gets a little bit behind the safety. And the two of them connect for a nice play. I'll tell you, he was almost hit by one of the ten, and I believe it was uh, Andy Redlow was uh, coming up on him. But Snyder let it go and let it go with authority. Jeff Klein will kick off for CB West. As they throw those balls up in the stands again. Back deep. Paul Lizzie and Julian Eichert. Now they switch. It's an interesting little thing they did back there. The kick doesn't come that deep, and it's taken by an up back and taken up by Kevin Solly. What they did, the ball was moved out to uh, about the 30, well, about the 33 yard line possibly. And what they did, Eichert and Lizzie crisscrossed as he went to kick the ball. The kick unfortunately was not a deep one for Tennant and an, up, and an up man got the ball and Solly took it up to about the 32 yard line. It'll be first and 10. Ball kick by Klein. Gets the ball downfield. West does a nice job to, kick, to get on the coverage right away. And here's Tennant again, pretty much where they started when they, the game first started with the ball. Back in motion, the handoff goes to Eichert. Eichert will take it up over the, uh, to the 35 yard line, gain of about three, just over the 35. Make it second down seven. Oh, place it just shy of the 35, still second and seven. A little longer seven. Looks like we have an equipment problem here and they're gonna take a quick moment to uh, get that handled. And while we have that break, just a reminder to get into the game this fall with Sportsline on Suburban Community Television. Hosted by local broadcast veteran Dan Taylor, call in live and talk game strategy with local high school and college coaches and sports experts Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Channel 9. All right, we've had everything taken care of. We're ready for play again. Second and seven, Greenberg. Pitches the ball to Eichert. They're stringing it out very well, and Eichert is not going to get outside. Mike Kamira on the tackle. Does a good job. He strings it out. Doesn't let Eichert get up field. And when he went to turn his shoulder, Kandera is right there to take him down and lose about a yard and a half, two yards. They're going to have a tough time getting outside on West. Very quick defensively and very well coached. I think they're going to have any success. It's going to be inside with the quick hitters. That was a loss of one, make it third down and eight, and a shotgun uh, is employed again. They try the fake hand. We're going to have a flag and see what the flag is. But here goes Greenberg running for his life. He throws, and he's got a man wide open for the first down. That was Chris Taylor. But let's see what the flag was. Now, it was thrown as the ball was snapped. It might have been that a defensive player lined up offside. Let's see what we have. Oh, it's an illegal formation on uh, Tennant. So it'll take him back five. It'll negate the first down. Tough penalty on uh, William Tennant. Might have been that the uh, tackle was not covered by an end. That's, that's frequently the case. You must have your tackles covered. In other words, covered meaning you must have a player on each side of the tackles who is a receiver. If you don't do that, it's an illegal formation. And I believe we had a motion man there. And because of that, the tackle was not covered. I believe that may have been the situation. At any rate, it doesn't really matter. It's a five-yard penalty negating the first down. Instead of first and 10, it'll be third now and at about 13. Man in motion. Greenberg back to pass. Scrambles, it's a little pass right into the middle, and that's going to get the first down and a lot more. It's a foot race down the sideline. Finally bringing down, Bill Lord brings down Kevin Tax, who made a little reception over the middle and goes a long, long way down to 
the 40-yard line of CB West. A nicely thrown ball and good scrambling ability by Greenberg to set it up. Yeah, Greenberg's really impressed me with his ability to move around in a pocket because West, to the lightest in company, has put some pressure on there. That's a little roll throwback pass where everybody's rolling to the, to the left and he throws it back to the guy going against the grain, Katz, and he makes a nice run out of it after he catches in a big first down for Tennant. First and 10, the ball just outside the West 40-yard line. Handoff goes to Lizzie, and he's not going to get anything. The middle of that defensive line just smothered Paul Lizzie. So he'll make it second down and 10. Clock moving inside, 3.15 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 CB West on a 39-yard touchdown pass from Ben Snyder to Dave Roberts. And Tennant's going to have a tough time tonight, Bob, against that defensive line which includes Adam Schmelzer, made the tackle there, Todd Velitis. They do some sub substituting. There you see the coach for... Uh, Howard Weibel. Howard Weibel. Second season, and um, it's tough when you come into this suburban one and, and try to win in that first, second season. I have a whistle, we have an equipment repair to Eichert, and that's taken care of. A lot of equipment problems early in this game. Second down, 10 yards to go. Backs are in the eye. Overberger was split wide right. Looks like he's audibly at the line. Quick looking pass intended for, but not complete. Uh, he was thrown a little bit behind the receiver. I believe that might have been George Hernandez. Yeah, that's No, it wasn't. Hard. Excuse me, it was Chris Mannon. I'm sorry. Chris Mannon. Also on the line for West, number 64. No, that's the linebacker, Gudisil. The other guy is Mazer, Greg Mazer, who we saw last time had a big game for West. So third down, we'll see the shotgun again with a double wing uh, formation. Greenberg takes the snap. Throws, he's hit as he throws, throws it too high. We have a flag, and that's usually in the holding area, Tom. Let's see what the call is. The flag was thrown, his contact was made in front of Greenberg. And this is usually a, a, in a holding area. Let's see what we got. It is a hold. It is against Tennant. They're going to walk it off and try and get him a little bit deeper. Since it was in the backfield, it'll add another three or four yards to the penalty. Yeah, they've had some penalties hurt them. Before, they had a nice little pass that was negated by that illegal formation. So... Not only are they having troubles executing, but then they're also having problems communicating and not getting the play set. So this moves the ball back to the 46-yard line, make it third down and 24 yards to go. And again, the lineup in the shotgun formation. Single setback, moving now out to the... Uh, single setback, yeah, will be Paul Lizzie, double wing formation. High snap handled by Greenberg. Got plenty of time, throws it down the middle. He's got Overberger. Overberger will take it out down to the 40-yard line, but he'll still be a long way short of a first down. But a well-delivered ball puts him back, gets the penalty yardage back plus a little bit. So that kind of might have backfired a little bit in uh, CBS space, simply because they got about three or four more yards than they would have had before. It would have been a punting situation from about the 43. Now it's a punt situation from the 40. See the pass, an excellently thrown ball, and great protection for Greenberg. Now the snap back this time is very good in a high angling kick, fair catch signal for. Ball rolling towards the goal line. Can they keep it in? Yeah, they keep it in play. Oh, and that's going to give the Bucks tough field position as a great punt is down at about the three yard line, and that's where CB West will take over. Yeah, Billy Lowe, you know, a lot of times you see a guy wave and then let the ball go. Whenever the ball's close to the 10-yard line, you probably want to catch the ball. There he opts to let it go, and it's a chance you take. He takes a chance, and Tennant gets a break. That was a well-kicked ball, too. It just sort of died there, and the, the coverage team got down there in time just before it rolled into the end zone. First and 10, the ball at the three-yard line. Ben Snyder in a quarterback. And he's got behind him Jason Williamson. Backs are split. And the handoff goes to Jason Williamson, breaks through a little bit of a hole. No, excuse me, that's not Williamson, that's Jason Gattuso. Uh, uh, Pop the leg, Williamson! 
Oh, it was Williams. was Williams, yeah. It's going to be a long night, Tom. Well, they got Mike Kundera <laughs> listed as one of the uh, wingbacks for uh, West tonight. He normally has played uh, split out or wide out. Tonight, uh, Petten's got him playing that wingback spot. And the Gattuso goes out on the right side. And Williamson is set back with Bill Lowe behind Ben Snyder after the six yard game, make it second and four ball at the nine yard line. Snyder on a keeper, he'll take it out over the 10, the 15, the 20, breaks inside of the 25, and he's finally brought down at about the 32 yard line. Ben Snyder with a great run, great seal blocking, followed his blocks well, a 23 yard gain, and the Bucks are out from the shadow of the goalpost and then some. Kandera makes a nice hook block on the end. Honesty, good kick out block. Schneider runs right up between the two of them and big game for West. And where they started down there on that one or two yard line now have plenty of room up over their 30 and in good shape. Well, there are eight seconds to go on the quarter. Let's see if they can get it off. Three, two, one, and the snap is just as the quarter ends. This will be the last play. Bill Lowe for a short game, and that will end the first quarter. The quarter has seen a 39-yard touchdown pass from Ben Snyder to Dave Roberts. Kick was good. It's seven to nothing. West leading as our Doylestown Hero Card scoreboard shows the story. We'll be back for second quarter action right after these words. Here in the heart of beautiful Bucks County, you can find the very best selection of designer gowns. Yes, here in Fountainville, Ann Bailey's Bridal Shop features New York style gowns in all sizes and an extensive price range. Since 1976, Ann Bailey's has been commended for their full service and affordable fair price tags. So why not stop by and see why? And no wedding would be complete without a handsome groom. And right next door, he too will be tailored to perfection. Pictured here, this Critzia tuxedo is a perfect blend of style and comfort. At Formales Tuxedos, they have all the distinctive designer names you're looking for. Formal names like Christian Dior, Pierre Cardin, Henry Grethel, and many more. Ann Bailey's Bridal and Formales Tuxedo. Hope to see you soon for your wedding or special occasion attire. Serving the Bucksmont community since 1918, the lawyers at Power, Bowen, and Valamont, located in Doylestown and Sellersville, want you to think of them first when you need a lawyer. Power Bowen and Valamont can handle all your legal needs, including personal injury and medical malpractice, real estate, zoning and land development, corporate tax, divorce and custody, wills and estates, and criminal litigation. For 75 years, Power Bowen and Valamont has made needing a lawyer a pleasant experience. We're back for second quarter action in War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Bob Friedman along with Tom White. The Bucks with the lead and the ball. Pitch goes back to Jason Williamson. Cuts across the 40 to the 43 yard line. And that'll be a first down for CB West. Tackle on a play by 71 for Tennant. Now he lined up, Bob, Ryan Platt, who happens to be one of the captains of this Tennant team. He lined up on the line of scrimmage, made the tackle seven or eight yards down the field. That's why he's one of the captains. So I'll tell you what, they got to do a better job on the line of scrimmage, maybe stunt some linebackers into those gaps and try to neutralize the offensive surge that Wes is putting on this defensive line for Tennant. Thus far, Tennant has not been able to stop the running game uh, of West, and the handoff goes again to Williamson, just as I mentioned that. He's hammered down after a one-yard game on a simple just shot up the middle. Jason Williamson carried the ball. But still he gets two yards on that play. And it's second down and eight yards to go for West. Brian Wolfgang, good stick in there from his linebacker spot. Tennant has a few sophomores playing tonight. Wolfgang is one of them. Also, you see uh, Greenberg, uh, who plays quarterback, is out there on the corner, has made a tackle or two tonight. So he's a guy who plays both ways, a senior, one of the leaders of the team. Backs a split, Bill Lowe and Jason Williamson behind quarterback Ben Snyder. Snyder goes straight back to pass. Under a rush, sets up the screen to Lowe. Oh, and it's well set up. The 50, the 40, and down the 40 yard line goes Bill Lowe. And we're going to have a late hit. You're going to put 15 more on it. That was a spear. I'll tell you what, 
number 14 for Tennant saved the touchdown, and that's Jeff er Overberger, and number 35 for Tennant, Paul Lizzie, who we talked about his offensive skills, he does hit low very late, and they're gonna get a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, 15 here. tacked on to it right there, and that'll take it down to the 25 yard line. The screen was perfectly set up. Let the line through, threw the ball to Lowe. Lowe went down, followed his blocks. If Overberger doesn't make that tackle, he is gone. Let's take a look at it one more time. You'll see it set up right, coming right at you. Here he comes, and he comes down here. If this tackle isn't made here, that's a touchdown. And then you saw the late hit. First and 10 ball at the 25 yard line of 10. 7 0 CB West with lead. And they have moved for their own three yard line, and they have moved quickly. Well, they have that full house backfield now, does West. Brian Hannessy joins the backfield. Back to pass Snyder, looking deep, throwing shallow, and it's just overthrown, intended for Mike Kandira, and we're going to have a penalty. Let's see if we have another hole. That would have been a touchdown of that he, ball. Been. He was wide open, oh, catches yeah. the ball, there was nobody behind him, it would have been a touchdown. I think it would have come back anyways. We're going to have a hold, and it is against West, and that'll move the ball back to the 35-yard line. Andy, Andy. So instead of a second and 10, it'll be a first and 20. On that screen pass, number 71 for William Tennant. Again, Brian Platt. He couldn't believe that he wasn't blocked. And he was so excited when he was in the backfield, he actually was stumbling and bumping, and he actually slipped down before he got to the quarterback. That's the signal to you as a defensive lineman that, hey, something's, something's up. wrong. Now. You're coming through that clean. But Snyder did it to perfection. He stood there coolly and calmly waited till the last possible second, released the ball perfectly to low. And you know what all you know how to do is catch the ball and stay on his feet. He's going to get at least 15 yards. Back split, back to pass. Rolling left is Snyder. He's got an open man down the side. Oh, and he just threw it to the other side of Mike Kandera. Kandera had it was wide open down around the 25-yard uh, line. And in all fairness to Snyder, that's a tough pass to throw going to your left. Kandera did all he could. He was just a little bit to Kandera's left side. Kandera running toward the sideline, couldn't quite reach back and get it. So it'll be second down and 20 yards to go, but a well-devised play. He had two wide open men actually down in that area. Well, the, the back side of the line for Wes is doing a nice job to contain the backside rush, so Snyder doesn't have to worry about guys coming from behind to get him. So he's real comfortable out there and he's had a lot of time to find somebody open. 10.02 to go in the second quarter. Now we have a single setback. That's Hannessy. And back to pass. Oh, and he's under a rush. He gets away from the one man, but he can't get away from the other. And starting it off was Platt and finishing him off was Andy Redlow coming up from his defensive back position. And a big loss back to the 49-yard line. He got third and forever. Let's take a... Let's take a look at it again. You see Snyder go back. You see Platt put the pressure on. Here comes Redlow. Gets away with a straight arm for a moment. Redlow follows it and finishes him off. Call it actually the 50-yard line, and they got to get down to the 15. So now you got third and 35. Well, see, we were saying this earlier, Bob, that they had to send a linebacker. He's a linebacker. Blitz came right behind Platt and makes a nice play. Third down and 35. Pump fake. And Snyder, Snyder throws short. Hits his man for a short game. It'll get it down closer. It's Dave Roberts on the reception. But it'll bring a fourth down up. And for the first time tonight, West will have to punt. So West hurt by the holding penalty. And then further hurt by the uh, sack. And they'll take time out to talk about it. Well, we had, well, we had that time out. Let's take a time out ourselves. We'll be right back. Whether you're in the stands or on the field, Primetime Sports is your athletic headquarters. Locally owned and operated, they feature everything from team caps, tees, and sweats to replica NFL jerseys and official NFL game balls. Remember, when the game's on the line, it's Primetime. 
Hi, I'm Joanne Maroney, a partner here at the New Class Harlan Real Estate located in the heart of Doylestown Borough. Our office at 15 West State Street used to be the livery stable for Doyle's Tavern, which is now known as the Mellon Bank. We are right next door and neighbors to the famous Doylestown Inn and Kenny's Newsstand. I've been in the real estate business in Doylestown for 10 years and pride myself in going the extra mile to service my clients and customers. Call me and I would be happy to sit down and talk to you about your real estate needs. I always have time for a neighbor. And we are back in action as the punt is a short one that bounces up. Oh, and it's going to take a great west bounce. I mean, a great west bounce down to the six-yard line. Ball kicked by Jason Gamble. Gamble got a short kick, but he got a great roll. Pooched it in there, and he gets it down to the six-yard line. It's Jason Gamble with an excellent kick. That's what a punter is supposed to do. And that's tough because you don't want to kick it too hard and get it in the end zone. If you kick it too soft, a lot of times you kick it off the side of your foot and don't get enough of it there. He just gets the right amount. And Tennant, who's had trouble because of penalties of their own, now in some trouble field-wise with a tough buck defense breathing. Now they have a full house backfield. And the handoff goes to Paul Lizzie, and Lizzie will take it out over the 10 to the 12-yard line as they had a backfield of Lizzie, Brian, Wolfgang, and Julian Eichert. And that'll get them around six yards, make it second down, well, maybe closer to five, make it second and five. And you got to like Weibel's decision there. He puts an extra back in the backfield, runs a lead guy in the hole, tries to get that extra block, and it works out for him. Instead of getting a two-yard gain, he got six. So look for him to use that lead as opposed to just a straight hit into the line. Well, the ball moved out to the 12-yard line. The handoff goes to Lizzie again, and Lizzie will break up, and he'll get about two or three, get it out to close to the 15-yard line. And that's a good that's a good play. I mean, that's good football. I mean, you're you're maybe size-wise, you're at a disadvantage, tenant versus West. You gotta put an extra guy in there and give somebody a whack on that linebacker. And Wolfgang's doing a nice job stepping in there and giving that little extra burst for Lizzie. And two plays, they've got, what, eight and a half yards? Yeah, make a third down on a short two yards to go. Ball at the 15-yard line. Full house backfield again. West almost jumps off. The handoff goes to Julian Eichert, and he's got the first down out over the 17 to about the 18-yard line. So a 6.55 to go in the half. Tennant gets the first down. They move out where they can do a little bit more business. They're still shy of the 20-yard line, but they got a fresh four now. Well, that's a, that's a big first down for them because you don't want to be three plays and have to punt out of your own end zone. Still have that full house backfield. The Greenberg under center. Greenberg keeps it himself. We're going to have a flag uh, thrown here. Greenberg loses yardage, and I'll be interested to see what this flag was. It might have been a mask. Tom White's indicating he thinks it's a face mask. I have a tendency to agree. Oh, it's a hold against Tennant. West had good pressure on that corner. It looked like when Greenberg went to duck and go by, saw the arm of the, the West guy come up. Apparently he was being held as opposed to grabbing the mask as we suspected. So that'll take him back after they push and shove and fight to get outside. Now they're gonna have to be penalized back to the seven yard line. Making a first and 20. This is tough. West getting a lot of kids into the game tonight. Seen a couple different guys. From the shotgun formation. Greenberg, this is a bit of a gamble. He steps up out of pressure. He can run if he wants. He's got a man over the middle, throws it too high. He decided to throw the ball. I'll tell you, it looked like Greenberg could have run for a few yards, but he decided to throw the ball, stepped up, did what a good quarterback has to do, Tommy. Stepped up from the pressure. All of a sudden, he had an open field, but he was looking for that pass. Yeah, really did a nice job to avoid possibly a sack in the end zone. Would have been a safety. Steps up, gets rid of the ball, was very well 
defended by West, could have been intercepted almost. But Tennant, here they are now, second down and long in a hole. And again, a double wing shotgun formation. This is a gutsy call here. It's gutsy if it works. Now what do we have? Flags all over the field, so obviously some movement here. Well, looked like Greenberg was in the backfield and he had his hands out and he was bobbing. And I wonder if he's gonna get him now. He might or not if call. the center moved the ball. Yeah. It's gonna be against Tennant, so now they're gonna be really set back. Back to the three yard line, half the distance to the goal line. And now you got a second down and 23 yards to go, but more than that, and they're gonna do the shotgun again. Well, some of the snaps have been high, so we, let's look to see if that center brings well, it down. I put somebody right over the center, right on his nose. Short snap, and they're gonna run out of the end zone, and he'll get maybe to the four. I'll tell you, if, I'm, if I have a shotgun there, I gotta put a guard right over the center's nose there, make him think about it. Make it third down. Of course, you also have the possibility that they can quick kick from here, too. Well, that might be the thing to do, because then you're not gonna get a run back. Less than a prevent defense here. Yeah, he, he thought about it. He had it like he was gonna kick it, but he didn't have time, and he just ran the ball up ahead. He saw him take his hands down as if he was gonna kick it, then realized, I don't have time to do this. See, the problem with a quick kick from a shotgun is instead of standing 10 yards back, you're standing five yards back, and the defense got in there quickly, and now it's a punting situation, and barring an unusual circumstance, the Buck should have fantastic field position. Snap is good and the kick is away, and it's a good end over end kick. Returnable though, Jason Williams and down to the 30, the 25, breaks inside the 20 to the 20, 25 to the 20, and he steps out of bounds. Otherwise, he would have gone, but they whistle him out right at the 20 yard line. Jason Williams and takes it back and almost took it home. Had he not stepped out of bounds, he's gone. Well, again, there's Tennant. They, they get the ball, start out on a three yard line. Nice little drive, first down, and boom, they get that couple of series of penalties. And here they are, West have the ball in great field position with an opportunity to score. And a reminder to join Delaware Valley College this fall and winter for Del Val Dialogue, featuring college president George F. West in an informal series of conversations with community and business leaders. The program is presented in conjunction with the college upcoming centennial celebration. Pitch goes to Billy Lowe. Billy Lowe to the 15, cuts outside of the 10. He's gonna cut inside of the five and brought down at the three yard line. Bill Lowe with a big run, and the Bucks are knocking at the door again. What a great block by the fullback. I think it was Brian Hennessy, number 43. Really kicks out that end, and Billy Lowe exploded past him. And a nice little move down to the goal line. Almost gets in for six. Ball marked at the four. By the way, on that Del Val dialogue, in case you're wondering, that's Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Delaware Valley College, a century completed, a century ahead. Correction, copy was misleading. It's Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. So, unbalanced backfield, handoff goes to Hannesy, pushing, shoving, and he's in. I think he's in, let me put it that way. Looked like he might have broken the plane, but we're standing way out here. No, they're gonna mark it down at about the one inch line. So Hannesy got the ball and was stopped. Look at that, the nose right up against the goal line. Brian Hannesy with a carry just went behind a surge, line surge, great push surge by the offensive line. And it's a second and goal. Led by center Randy Overstreet. Also Bill Lampin on the line for Wes, Gabe Serling, and also John Hubbaugh. Good line search tonight by the West offensive line. Backs a split. And the handoff goes to Hannesy, and it's a touchdown, there you go. So Brian Hannesy takes the ball in, it's 13 another with 4.11 to go in the half. That time they ran right behind tackle Mike Gimble. Gimble does a good block on his man. The back is able to slip, fall right into the end zone. And West really, 
really dominating, I believe, on it, that offensive line. Can it really have problems with the size? Yencha will uh, attempt the kick again, Jonathan Yencha. Out of Snyder's hole. Snap is low, and they're going to go for two, and he's got a wide open right side. He's going to run it in. Now, I don't know if that was designed, but it was a low snap. Snyder picked the ball up. Look, he saw absolutely nobody on the right side of the line, and he took it in. So Snyder runs it in, and it's 15 to nothing. But well, usually what happens on that play is you give the quarterback the option if the ball is a bad snap. He'll pick the ball up and yell fire or some kind of buzzword and have some guy just run a little out in the end zone and it, usually you have someone to throw to. Nobody heard him because it looked like for a second there, Snyder must have called something after he saw the snap, but nobody reacted to it and he said, hey man, I gotta run. He did I a nice job. It. He took, and he took the look. There was absolutely, you know, when he started running the ball, unless he fell down, there was no way they were going to stop him. So it's 15 to nothing, and Jeff Klein will tee it up again. Iker, along with Lizzie D. 4-11 to go in the half, and the Bucks have taken a 15 to nothing lead. Line hits it, it's a ground ball, and it'll be fielded at the 25 yard line by an upback who breaks through. And I believe again, it's Kevin Solly who fielded the last kick. And we have an injured uh, West player on the field. Let's take a break, we'll find out who it was, and we'll be right back. Remember the neighborhood tavern where you could relax with old friends and meet new ones as well? Cheesesteak Charlie's is that tavern. Now there's more of that friendly atmosphere than ever with a new roomier decor complete with booths, a wraparound counter, and a separate pool table area. Sporting the biggest screen in town, Cheesesteak Charlie's is perfect for pro and college, prism and ESPN events. Hungry? The kitchen's open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. and Sundays, 12 to 12. And takeout is available. So why not check out Cheesesteak Charlie's new look and meet a new friend today? Repco has been the name to trust for all your foreign car part needs since 1976. Open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 9 to 2, for your convenience. If we don't stock your part, we'll have it within two days. Repco, the name to trust for your foreign car. Back at War Memorial Field, the injured player was Eric Kelly on that punt return and it looks like he might have had something to go with he's holding his hand. He's being helped on off by the medical staff but he seems to be all right now. From the shotgun again, Kevin Weaver throws, hit as he throws and oh, a great interception. An absolutely spectacular interception by Mike Kandira throwing up and one-handing the ball. Greenberg Threw the ball, was hit as he threw. Had a man open, but he couldn't get everything on it. And I mean, Kandira just made an absolutely stellar play. Yeah, great defensive play. You see Kandira there, he's gonna play both ways tonight. Steps in the offensive huddle. Good drop. Greenberg really forced the ball, tried to do a little bit too much, but as he was throwing, he really got dinged. And West does a nice job, get the ball back, and with uh, 3.54 to go and a half, have an opportunity to put some more points on the board. And no backfield, this is a pass, it looks like a passing, obviously it looks like a passing situation. Absolutely no one in the backfield. Now there's motion, Bill Lowe, and he'll take the pitch. So they do run the ball, they spread it out, and Lowe will take it out to about the 33 yard line. Interesting concept, they spread the defense out and decided to try and use Lowe's speed. He got about six, but good pursuit by Tennant keeps him from getting a lot more yardage. Yeah, on defense, Overberger really has played well. Watch number 14 come up here in your screen and make the tackle. You know, watching Billy Lowe as he is progressed, he's becoming an exceptional running back. Good power, good speed, and he sees the holes, he sees the opening, and that, that's what you need to be a great running back. Billy Lowe has really made a solid transformation into an 
exceptional running back. Backs in the eye now. Straight back to pass, Snyder. Throwing deep, he's got a man wide open, and it's, oh, just overthrown, intended for Dave Roberts. Roberts wide open at the goal line. Snyder just put it a little bit too far. On that replay, it was really Kevin Solly who came up and made the tackle. Greenberg was right there with him, but there's 28 Kevin Solly, who was the guy that actually made the tackle on that last play. He's wide open, Roberts. Play action did that, frozen for a moment, and Roberts with tremendous speed. Snyder just, Snyder throw to, showed a great arm on that throw. Just had it a little bit too far for Roberts, but those two connected earlier. You've got a feeling you're gonna see a lot more of that before this season's over. Sometimes a quarterback, you see a guy that wide open, you just can't contain yourself. Back split on third and four, and Snyder will follow his left side of the line trying to get the first down, but strung out beautifully by the uh, defense of Tennant Platt in on that tackle, going a ways down, along with Brian Wolfgang from his linebacker spot. spot and it brings down a fourth down. And I don't think you're gonna punt in this situation because they're down inside the 35 uh, yard line. They're gonna call a timeout with 237. To talk about this. And while we have this timeout, a reminder. For six weeks every year at Shady Grove, Shady, Shady Brook Farms, we let the ghosts and ghoulies run wild over our 300 acre vegetable farm. Once again this fall, they're back. And this time, they brought friends. We invite you, if you dare, to bring your family and friends to our hayride of horror. And there's a bonfire after the drive. Call 968-1670 for a howling evening. Ooh, I'm scary enough, guys, without doing that. Anyway, the West team over talking to Coach Mike Ketton and, my, and assistant coach Mike Carey. Fourth down, about four yards to go. I think they're gonna try something with a little spread out, spread it out a little bit. Well, you know what they love? They love that little flood pass where they send three or four guys the same side of the field, give the quarterback the option to run or throw. And generally, West is successful with it. All right, Roberts will split right. Single setback is Hannes, he low splits left. Back to pass rolling. Looking, throws a little pass, it's gonna be a first down and then some, as catching the ball and then moving along for good yardage there, I believe. Let's see who we got on that catch there. I, I believe that's Todd Velitis. It is Todd Velitis, coming from his tight end spot. So they showed some speed at the flanks and look for Todd Velitis. Velitis caught the ball, gets the first down inside the 20. The sticks moves the ball at the 17 yard line now. Tell you what, Lizzie really, 5'6", 145 pounds. He put a stick on Todd Velitis. You gotta love it. Back to pass, Snyder looking right, rolling right. Throwing, he's got a man in the end zone, cut down, Jason Williamson. Perfectly thrown ball, Ben Snyder. And Ben Snyder's becoming a big league quarterback, Tom. Well, he's really getting comfortable with with the offense, where to give you the ability to really get out there, find yourself comfortable place, feet. Does a nice job finding Williamson in the back of the end zone. You see Williamson, Williamson there on his screen. He kind of got lost back there. Looked like he was covered for a second, and Snyder really did a good job of reading him and got the ball right between the two defenders. High snap to Yencha, and he pulls the ball left. In all fairness, the snap was high. It was a quick set down. Yencha just pulled it a little bit. Extra point, no good. It's 17 to nothing. Snyder absolutely drilled that ball. I'm sorry. I'm saying 17 to nothing. I'll be all right. It's 22 to nothing. I had a score as being 15 to nothing. It's 50, no, it's 21 to nothing. 21 to nothing. It's 21. They had 22 up on the board. They must have thought that he had made the extra point, but 
we know better. The score, as we saw and we see there on the scoreboard, 21 to nothing. 21 to nothing. So don't be fooled, folks. It isn't 17 to nothing. It is 21 to nothing. We gave the extra four points. At any rate, Jeff Klein will line the ball up to kick it off. Deep again, Julian Eichert and Paul Lizzie. Lizzie from a good sports family, a good wrestling family. The Lizzie's have been well known through the area as excellent football players and wrestlers. Klein gets a nice foot into this one. We'll get down to Eichert, who will take it out over the 25 to about the 30, outside the 30 to about the 33, 34 yard line. And Tennant will take over with exactly two minutes to go in the half. Well, you gotta expect Greenberg's just gonna go back into a shotgun formation, maybe send two or three guys out in a pattern and just try to move the ball up the field because they gotta get some points on the board before half if they wanna go into that locker room with some kind of momentum. And again, the shotgun formation. Greenberg with a single setback, double wing formation. Back. Greenberg avoids a rush and then can't avoid the rushes. Coming up to get him was Jason Gattuso from his linebacking spot. He had some protection. That's a coverage sack, Tom. There just was nobody open. Stepped up a moment, but Gattuso would not let him get outside. And it's a loss of about eight on the plate. Make it second and 18. Clock still moving inside a minute 35 to go. The West has got a guy at 17 yards at safety, so it's going to be tough to get by him. Handoff underneath, and this isn't going to work either. As the handoff went, it could have worked, except it was just such a delayed handoff. There were three black shirts there. By the time uh, Lizzie got the ball, he'll lose another yard or two and make it third down. Third down and close to 20 yards to go. The clock moving with a minute seven to go. And Catuso there again on the stop. The Catuso gang was there. There was two or three extra black shirts there in the backfield. Now Greenberg, he's going to let the clock run a little bit because he knows he's got a long way to go for the first down. He's got to watch. He doesn't have a whole lot of time left. Inside a minute to go. Third down, he quick kicks. Quick kicks, and he's going to roll out of bounds at about the 50 yard. No, it stays in and it stays into about the 47 yard line. So with 33 seconds to go in the half, a quick kick and he left footed the ball. It was a good kick. It was kicked it away from the guy receiving the ball, so he's not gonna get any return. That's smart. He didn't get the roll, it didn't go out of bounds. But he's gonna give Ben Schneider the ball back with 33 seconds to go. And Ben's having a pretty good night throwing the ball. Well, Ben may try one pass. He may just, they may just hand the ball off uh, because they get the ball in the second half, opening the second half. Clock moving, 20 seconds to go in the first half, barring a pass or an incompletion. This should be the last play of the first half. Backs are in the eye. And we have a penalty, and let's see what we got. Side judge calls that. May have had movement on the offensive line. Clock will stop with 14 seconds to go. It's offside, they lined up in the neutral zone. So they made, with 14 seconds to go, they may just try one bomb. That's what I'd do, I mean, 14 seconds to go, Schneider's been hot. Now the thing is, if Tennant's smart, they're gonna have a guy at 17 yards and hopefully not let anybody get behind him. So maybe what you gotta try to do is run him off and then throw something underneath and hope the this guy is, can this bust This is where it. I run my favorite play in the whole world. The hook and ladder. Hook and ladder. Oh, I love that play. 10 yard out to the tight end, pitch back to the back. And everybody drawn in, and here comes the back right by. I saw that work against Penn State in the Sugar Bowl years ago by George at the end of the half. Now what they're saying, I think they want to put five more seconds on the clock. The clock was moving when they blew the whistle for the penalty. And they're coming up to the box, and they're coming up to the press box. The clock operator's right next to us, and they want to put five more seconds on the clock. There's 14 seconds to go in the half. The clock operator tonight is uh, Mr. Miller, who's done it almost. They're not giving him the five, they're going to leave 14 seconds. Backs are in the eye. Snyder, straight back to pass. He looks, he's gone deep. 
He's got Dave Roberts adjusting to the ball. Oh, he just couldn't quite come up with it. And there's eight seconds to go. Roberts did a terrific job of adjusting to the ball, but could not quite come up with it. He had to just adjust inside of his defender, who had him covered well on the plate. That was Mike Flagler who was on Roberts. Roberts looked back, saw the ball, adjusted, but couldn't quite get to it. And that would have been a sensational play, so you got time for one more play. Yeah, there he just tries to air it out. Now you might see him try to throw something underneath and hope the guy can bust it. I think with a talent like Roberts, you just air it out for him again. He really adjusted beautifully to that play. Bill low, wide right, Roberts wide left, backs in the eye. Back to pass Snyder. He'll roll, he's being chased. He's gonna go down and that'll end the, that'll end the half. So, we have come to the end of 24 minutes of play, a game that has been all CB West thus far. Teams head for the locker rooms. At the end of two quarters of play, the Doylestown Hero Card scoreboard shows you the story. 21-0, we'll be right back to wrap up this first half. With the uncertainty of today's real estate market, many would-be home buyers have adopted a wait-and-see attitude. Your Coldwell Banker agent, on the other hand, thinks it's time to wake up to the possibilities. Home prices may never be this affordable again. Interest rates may never be this attractive. Altogether, it's a great time to buy a home. All it takes is opening your eyes to the opportunities and knowing who to call. Coldwell Banker. Expect the best. Y'all two-step your honey into the Coach Dog Tavern for live country music five nights a week. Treat her to late night snacks or other appetizing vittles. Or if your baby has achy break in your heart, come on in and meet up with some fine friendly folk. Located on East Street Road in Southampton, the Coach Dog Tavern. Country before country was cool. See y'all there. Since 1971, Stryker Soccer Center has been in Doylestown supplying soccer players like you with the best equipment in the soccer world, including over 150 styles of shoes by Diodora, Miter, Adidas, Puma, Lotto, Patrick, and more. And Stryker has a full line of uniforms and goalie equipment by Ulf Sport, Roish, Umbro, Hummel, and Cannon. So come to Stryker for everything you need. Season after season after season after season after season. Stryker after Soccer Center. Call us at 348-9400 and visit our store in Doylestown. Furnace not heating like it used to? Get the Train 2 Stage 80 Furnace with a low speed for mild conditions and a high speed for extreme cold. It heats your home evenly, efficiently, and quietly. It's hard to stop a train. See Elite Conditioning for all of your air conditioning and heating needs. Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. We are at halftime with the scores. CD West 21, William Tennant, nothing to see the Doylestown Hero Card scoreboard. And Tom, not a dominating performance by West, but they've gotten the job done. And a halftime show, of course, brought to you by Villa Capri, 51 on the West Court Street, Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Don't forget every Monday, two large pies, $9.99, the best deal in town. Halftime story has been West. They've dominated on, they haven't dominated rather, but they've done the job, as I mentioned. They, they pass the ball extremely well. They've run well. 
Hennon has not done badly. They do the ball well, but they've hurt themselves with penalties, and Wes has come up with a big play when they had to. Exactly. The start of the game, they get the ball on the opening kickoff. Two first downs to start off the game. You see their penalties, five for 10 and three for CB West. But as we were saying, they get the ball to start the game, two first downs, then two penalties put them back and they have, to, they have to kick the ball. And when they go to kick the ball, they're gonna snap the ball or to, as a fake punt. And the guy that's supposed to get the ball doesn't realize he's supposed to get the ball. And West ends up getting the ball. Two plays later, they score. And you see there, they had the ball from their own 23. Four plays, fake punt, didn't work. Okay, on their, then they got on a 33, eight plays, punt. And you see punt, interception, punt. But in there, were four penalties that really hurt them. Absolutely, as, and as far as West is concerned, they've done a great job. They got the ball in the first quarter was 7.06 to go. After that, after that fake punt didn't work, it was Dave Roberts, you see CB West drive, starting at their own 42 yard line. They got the ball, Dave Roberts, they moved down to the 39 where Dave Roberts caught a 39 yard touchdown pass from Ben Snyder, Yancha with the extra point and it was seven to nothing. Next possession got them nothing, but in the second quarter, they moved the ball down from the uh, 10 and 20 yard line, moved it down to the one yard line where Brian Hannesey took it in for the touchdown. Snyder ran for the two points, made it 15 to nothing. As it looked like a low snap, it might not have been a devised play, but it worked perfectly for them. Then after the great interception by Kandira, they moved down uh, from the 38-yard line in five plays. The final play, a gorgeous 17-yard pass from Ben Snyder to Jason Williamson, and that made it 21 to nothing. The extra point attempt was wide left. That's where we stand right now. For the second half, Tom, Tennant's got their work cut out for them. Not only they have they trail by 21 points, they have to kick the ball away. Yeah, they got it. Not hurt themselves with penalties. Trying to do a little bit more on defense in terms of taking the run and the big play away from West. And at the same time, maybe get West to make some mistakes that they can take and make opportunities at them for themselves and try to make points. Because right now, down 21 nothing, they need a bunch to get back. So there you have it. We've completed the first half of play. The William Tennant marching band entertaining the CB West crowd here, a happy CB West crowd. We are at halftime, it's 21-0, the Bucks leading the Panthers. We'll take a break and we'll be back for the third quarter kickoff. Don't go away. Whether you're in the stands or on the field, Primetime Sports is your athletic headquarters. Locally owned and operated, they feature everything from team caps, tees, and sweats to replica NFL jerseys and official NFL game balls. Remember, when the game's on the line, it's prime time. Quality and trust. Using these guidelines, Suburban Auto Works is committed to repairing your car or truck to your satisfaction. With 24-hour towing and full-service collision center, Suburban Auto Works certified mechanics are qualified for any repair, including complex unibody repairs. With 25 years' experience, the Mann Brothers offer you the very best in quality, efficient body and trim work. And working with DuPont's Assurance and Quality program, their color matching system assures you of a tough factory finish. Suburban Auto Works, the assurance of quality for you. Chalfont's best-kept culinary secret is out. The roasted pepper is where to be for daily lunch and dinner specials, a salad bar, an everyday breakfast special for $2.95, and mouth-watering Italian dishes. The diverse homemade specialties include chicken and broccoli stuffed shells, crab meat or shrimp manicotti, and lobster, chicken, or shrimp fra diablo. A children's menu is also available, so before or after the game, do your appetite a favor and visit the roasted pepper. Where to go for the area's hottest entertainment, great food at great prices, and a happening new game room? The Amber Inn, of course. You've got to check out their new 52-inch jumbo screen for Phillies and Eagles games, and don't forget their awesome after-work parties on Thursdays. Be a part of the in crowd. The Amber Inn.
Just because you're 75 doesn't mean you have to feel as if you're 105. Delcrest, delivering customer satisfaction for over 25 years. Get ready for the most frightening ride of your life! <laughs> Take a haunted hayride to Acres of Horror in Buckingham. Every night during October, the hay wagons depart for a tour of terror. You'll see a torture chamber. <laughs> you'll be attacked by gorillas. Wonderful! And you'll visit the haunted cemetery. It's all fun for all ages. Haunted Hayrides at Stepping Stone Farm in Buckingham. Call Haunted Hayrides at 598-7858. 598-7858. This is SCT, local programming for Bucks, Montgomery, and Hunterton County. The teams have returned to the field from the halftime exercises, and we see the Doylestown Hero Card scoreboard. CB West with a comfortable 21 0 lead over William Tennant. Bob Friedman along with Tom White Glegg. You could join us for the Suburban One League Tussle here at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Tom's starting to get a little nippy outside. Temperatures dropped, I'd say, down uh, to about 50 degrees. Still no breeze, but West, as we mentioned just before halftime, West doing an excellent job jumping out to that 21 0 lead. And to make matters worse for. Uh, Howard Weibel's William Tennant Panthers, they have to kick the ball away in the second half. Yeah, you'll probably look for Billy Lowe to be the setback back there, and uh, you've got to come down and wrap the arm so he could, on that one play, increase the score. You know, we talked about Kevin Greenberg, his experience and expertise, and he, he's, done, he's done fine this half. He had a tough, you know, tough way to go. He's falling behind uh, early, but... Ben Snyder has just matured so much since that first game we saw him. He's throwing with authority, he's finding the open receiver, and you may have found, you may have a find here also in Dave Roberts. It's it's a good passing combination. Of course, you always have of Mike Kandira, who's a solid receiver too, but Roberts and Snyder, both juniors, you look for that combination to hook up for a lot of passes over the next season and a half, barring any unforeseen injuries. So forth. There you see Howard Weibel, head coach at uh, Tennant High School. William Tennant, of course, located in Warminster, Pennsylvania. And it's just, you, you see players develop a Billy Lowe, a Ben Snyder, a Dave Roberts. You saw Mike Kandira uh, develop last year and the year before. You saw the, uh, the, the development and growth. And, 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 football growth of uh, Matt Sonsini when he was a sophomore to when he was a senior. And it, it's what high school football is all about. The players grow with the program. They maybe don't go on to play college ball. A lot of them don't go on and play college ball. But this is it for them. This is the best of all football, high school football, because they're playing it for nothing more than the joy and the love of the game for the most part. The coaches are to be commended, Mike Patton, uh, Howard Weibel, John Quinn of East, uh, Steve Curley of Quaker Town, and uh, all the coaches. I, I don't mention Bill Travers, of course, in North Penn. And I, you know, I don't mention all the coaches, but every coach. They're teachers, they're coaches, they do a great job. And now I said my little piece. We're ready for the kickoff. And this. Second half kickoff sponsored by KMC Sports, the official licensed sports apparel dealer. Approaching the ball and kicking it away and then going down deep to about the 12 yard line. Returning the ball now is Jason Williamson. Has a little crack up the middle. Gets it over the 35 to the 36 yard line. Jason Williamson, who almost returned the punt all the way, found the hole and got a good acceleration. Takes it out on a nice return, a 23 yard return. And the Bucks are set up at the 36-yard line. Brad Koning saved the day for Tennant. Wraps up Williamson as you can see Jason there uh, tucking in on the sideline. West takes over first and 10 on their own 36-yard line. 
Full house backfield behind Ben Snyder, and the handoff goes to Billy Lowe. Lowe breaks outside the 40, the 50, breaks inside the 45, the 40, 35, 30. It's a foot race. Billy Lowe is brought down at the one yard line. Bill Lowe took the handoff, followed his blocking, and we talked about the maturation of a football player. You saw it right there. Bill Lowe with a sensational 67 yard run brought down on a Touchdown saving tackle, at least temporarily, at the one foot line. Good blocking in there again by, by uh, Hanasita. The three back, the mid full back does a nice job, the free low. Low does a nice job to cut behind his downfield blocking and then just burst it upfield. And only a great save at the end there by the tenant defender. Did low not get in, but this West offensive line is probably going to try. House backfield, low with the tailback. He's going to take it, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. And that's only fitting. Bill Lowe, after a sensational 67-yard run on the first play from scrimmage in the second half, scores at the 56-second mark on a one-yard run, and it's 27 to nothing. Before tonight, Billy Lowe came in with five touchdowns. So there he adds his sixth, and he is the scoring leader for this West team. I'll tell you, he, maybe it's preachy when you talk about these kids as Jens just sets up for this extra point. Snap a little high, put down, he kicks it up, and he puts it through, and it's 28 to nothing. You get a little preachy sometimes about these kids, but it's such a thrill to watch a kid develop. Bill Lowe, we saw him last year as a sophomore. He ran well, but with some uncertainty, he was on the second team. He would come in and, and mop up duty in a lot of situations. And this year, you saw Bill Lowe a little bit tentative early in the season. But as you've seen it through the past weeks, the Ben Salem game, ever since he lost to Norriston, this has become Ben Snyder, Bill Lowe, Jason Williamson, the offensive line. They've done such a terrific job. And it's great to see that kind of development. Also aided with the power of Velitis and Gattuso on the defense. Uh, you can start to see the maturity of this team and the team start to gel. Um, and the Suburban One League is becoming a dog fight again. That's right. As you look down the road. Lost, right, it's Abington's, anybody's. Yep. Abington, of course, losing three to nothing to yeah. Council Rock on Jordan Adler's field goal. We saw Mr. Adler a few weeks ago pound one through from 49. Now the kickoff by Klein, a good kick down to about the 12-yard line taken there by Eichert. Eichert breaks it up over the 30 to about the 35-yard line. A nice return by Julian Eichert. And we got a chance uh, to talk about so many other teams that I got a chance to see a CB East team play a Norristown team a week ago, and that East team is getting better every week. With eight seconds to go, the Norristown score to win that game. So West was, or East was in it all the way. So you got to be happy for the boys at East and uh, Coach Quinn. Coach Quinn making these moves. They had a tough early season, but it all leads up to that November the 12th game. East-West. We'll talk about that as the season goes along. Overberger in motion now. And this time under center is Kevin Greenberg. He hands the ball off to Paul Lizzie, and Lizzie will get about three, maybe four on the play as they were doing strictly shotgun in the second quarter. Coach Carey getting some of the younger players in. And what he's doing is he's putting one or two kids in with the other nine experienced player. There's Kevin McCaskill in number 86 on the tackle. Also in there playing some in the first half was Brian Connor. He's a 6'3", 170-pound sophomore playing defensive end for the Bucks tonight. Second down, six yards to go. Overberger again in motion back. Split Eichert and Lizzie. Back to pass goes Greenberg. He's gone deep. Covered well on the play. Was the uh, intended receiver. That was Kevin Katz. And he was covered very well on the play. Let's see who had that coverage. Billy Lowe was back there. But I believe that was Jason Williamson on the coverage. Yeah, the future looks good for West, and the future looks good for Central Bucks football. We'll talk about that in a little bit. 
as their feeder school's doing extremely well this year. We'll talk about that after this play. Shotgun formation, third down, six yards to go. Single setback is Lizzie. Double wing. It's a snap. A little crisscross action, sideline pass. Too long intended for Chris Taylor. Make it a fourth down. We have a flag down, we have a flag down. I'll tell you what, the official's gonna get Dave Roberts for, I think, a late hit. But I don't believe it's a late hit. It's clean, he hit him uh, square, wasn't trying to hit him when he was down. But I believe the official's gonna get him here for a late hit, because after the pass sailed over his head, he hit him. And you gotta teach your defensive backs to do that, because sometimes it's the only means you have against a good quarterback like Greenberg is to try to intimidate the receivers. Uh, yeah, to a degree, that pass was a little bit wide, so it's, it's, it's a tough judgment call. But it's a personal foul. We'll take a look at the replay here. No, I decided let's not take a look at the replay, Tom. It just was too... Br oh, all right, we'll take a look at the replay. What the heck? Now, that was... That's a tough call. <laughs> that's a tough call. <laughs> that's incidental contact. Only be, maybe you may call it because the arms came out in a push motion, but... At any rate, it's a first and 10 ball now inside Buck territory at the 47 yard line. And in shotgun again is Kevin Greenberg rolling to his left. He's gonna run the ball. It's to the 45 and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 41 yard line. Let's talk about the future of Central Bucks football. The feeder school's doing extremely well. Well, the last two years, a school in uh, the Warwick, Jamison area, Tamman, had been undefeated for two years. They've had a change there coaching and haven't done as well. But let's talk about the three teams, Lenape, Holly Kong, and Unami, all within the Central Buck School District, all winning today and all 4-0. And as I understand it, Lenape and Unami play next week, both teams being undefeated. So coaches from both schools got to be happy with what's coming up. A uh, semi-screen and ah, uh, it could have worked for a lot more yardage except for some excellent defensive play by Jeff Gutz Gutisell. Yeah, they're happy to have Gutisell back. Plays that middle linebacker spot. Does a good job to chug all the way out there to the sideline and wrap the arms before the back is able to get a first down. But third and three, third and long two for Tennant. Probably their best opportunity we've seen them have all night. Paul Lizzie on that catch and run. And it'll be a third down two yards to go, as you mentioned. Shotgun formation. Straight up quarterback draw, that's not going to do it. He's going to be caught short of the first down. You got to think at this point they'll go for the first down here. Well, see, I can see maybe doing that in a longer situation where they're expecting a pass, but when you, if you're in a quarterback keeping, you only need three yards, maybe you want to get right up under the center and, and well, do Well, I was going to say, quarterback keep, you don't do from the shotgun formation. You do, it, you do it under the center, you step back a yard maybe, draw the defense, and then follow it up the middle. But that was the call. Now they're going to measure for this, but it looks like they're a good half yard shy of that first down. Now it looks like he sent so hunt team in, but I can't believe he's not going to go for it here. This is the best field position tenants had all night. At least since early in the first quarter when they moved over the midfield line. They're very close to the first down. You see how far they're about half the length of the football for the first down. You got to think they're going to go for it. I, I, I can't believe the coach Weibel would just give up the opportunity here. And they're not, they're, they're gonna go for it as uh, Greenberg comes back into the game. Now Greenberg will probably go under center on this one, I certainly would think. And he does. He's got, a, he's got that full house backfield again. Let's see if Paul Lizzie gets it. He's a power back. Or if he calls his own number, Greenberg. Calls his own number and he's got the first down. Just a simple push behind the line, is, uh, behind the offensive line, get a little bit of a push, and he's got that half yard. Suddenly move the sticks and get a fresh four with 8.35 to go in the third quarter. 28 to nothing, CB West leading William Tennant. And even with a comfortable lead for West at 28 nothing, the penalty hurt them after some good defense. What was what they call the late hit now gives uh, Tennant a first down after that quarterback keep by Greenberg. Chris Taylor in motion. Back to pass from the shotgun formation. Greenberg avoids a rush. He throws it just before he goes out of bounds. He throws the ball away. He was uh, being chased there by Todd Valaitis. Mentioned his name on more than one occasion. 
He does a good job. He, he'll play either down and sometimes up from his defensive end spot. In the, in the game, you see uh, Bill Laffin, number 66, out Ralph Castillo, 42. West going with a more experienced group here on third and 10. Actually, second and 10. Second and 10, excuse okay. me. So second and 10, the ball down at the 36-yard line. And almost, yeah, he did jump off sides. Jason Gattuso trying to get that early jump. Jumps off sides, so he'll now make it second and five. Ball moved down to the 31. Coach Mike Carey not, not happy with that, but that's, you're anticipating the snap. You got a guy in a shotgun formation. He's coming in on that blitz, why not? Now what happens is when you go off sides, the coach sends somebody else in for you as he does there. The Tuso, who is one of the captains, they don't put up with that as I see Penton giving him an earful right now in to replace him is Brian Connor, who has seen a lot of action tonight. Oh, but Catuso made North Penn's night miserable a few weeks ago. Excellent defender, one of the best. Shotgun formation and now under a rush, and Belaitis has got him. You want a reason that offenses don't like to play CB West? Let's, let's call it the Valaitis Gattuso and also Goodisell show. Oh, Valaitis all over him. I'll tell you, he was on him. He, there was absolutely no way that he could get outside. A big loss, make it third down now and about 13 yards to go. So they get that penalty yardage back and then some. A single setback, double wing again, shotgun formation. Back goes Kevin Greenberg. Throwing over the middle, he's got a man. It's thrown a little bit too high. Oh, a great attempt by Paul Lizzie on that. Excuse me, that wasn't Lizzie, that was uh, Julian Eichert. Jumping for the ball. Almost made a catch a la Kandira's interception, one-handed. But it was uh, delivered a little bit too high. And Unfortunately, uh, Eicher couldn't come down with the ball. Fourth down, they're gonna go for it again. The interesting thing was at the end of the play, the safety coming up was Dave Roberts. That time he didn't hit him, a la the in in intimidation by the ref. Fourth and 13, ball at the 38-yard line. Back to pass, he's under a rush, he gets it away, throws it up the middle. Intercepted by Dave Roberts. Cuts to the right, he's over the 35, the 40. Up to the 45-yard line, he's going to be knocked out of bounds by Greenberg at the 49, 48-yard line. So, the interception by Dave Roberts moves the ball up to midfield, and the Bucks will take off again. And now Mike Petton wants to know why no flag there, as it appeared he might have been tackled out of bounds. You see Petton talking, or Petton is talking to the official. Well, let's take a look at it again. Good job by Roberts here. Just plays center field, catches the ball at the highest point. Now he tries to find a wall, gets behind his blockers. Good angle by the tenant defense here to, to cut him off from going up the sideline, but a nice defensive play by Dave Roberts. Yeah, and the tackle, the reason he didn't throw the flag is he wasn't out of bounds when he went into the dive. And you, you can't assume the man's gonna run out of bounds. You saw up, the guy could head straight up field and suddenly he's in the other end zone. So first down, single setback. Handoff goes to Brian Hannessy. Hannessy pushes the stack forward, gets it over midfield to the 48-yard line. Call it a gain, 49-yard line. Call it a gain of three. Make it second down, seven yards to go. Seven minutes to go, third quarter. 28-0, Bucks leading William Tennant. Mike Patton trying to get Hannessy a few reps running the ball. You know why he's in there is Randy Overstreet, the center, comes out of the game. Dave Braun in the quarterback now. Dave, Dave Braun in a quarterback, but Hannessy is a tenacious blocker out of that backfield. Ben Snyder just getting a rest. He has a 28-point lead, wants to give Braun some, uh, some time. And Braun throws a hard pass, a little bit high for Gattuso, but I'm sure if he asked Jason, he would have said he should have caught the ball. He extended as high as he could. Braun should have put some mustard on that ball. Had Gattuso come down with it, another big gainer for the Bucks. I think if you talk to some of the, the West coaches uh, before the season started, and you were talking about who was going to play quarterback, if you had to evaluate arm strength, I think they would have gave the edge to Braun, as we saw in that play. He really does have a strong arm. Quarterback position well manned for the next two years. Braun also is a junior. Straight back to pass. 
Has some time, puts it over the middle. Complete there and taking it down to the 35-yard line is Mike Kandira. A well-delivered ball by Dave Braun. Kandira tackle out of bounds. A nice, nice play by number 50, the linebacker, Billy Wiley from Tennant. Well, you see, you see uh, Mike Kandira catching the ball coming right at you here in your living room. Have some coffee for him. But a well-thrown ball by Dave Braun. He just set up, and again, the protection was exceptional. Backs in the eye. That's low, and Hannessy behind Braun. Pitch back to low, to the third. Cuts inside and gets down to the 25-yard line. It'll be a first, it should be a first down for CB West. I'll tell you what, I, I love this Hannessy kid at, at, at fullback. Again, a crushing block. You can hear the pads hit. Right here, our sideline, Mike. You gotta love it. When, if you're a running back, you're Billy Lowe, you gotta have a kid like Honesty in front of you knocking people. Well, it wasn't a first down. They placed the ball back. It'll be second and short, so you really have a free play here again. However, everybody is in tight. And Braun. Rolling left, he looks, he's gonna throw deep. He's got Dave Roberts out there. Oh, and it's just tipped away from Roberts at the last second. I don't know if it was tipped or not, but that was Kevin Greenberg back there. And he either tipped it or he just got enough, his hand up in time to, so that Roberts couldn't get a clean grab of the ball, but that ball was delivered almost perfectly. Yeah, Greenberg had good position, he was inside where the, the receiver's gonna look the ball in. So, Braun tries to get the ball up over him and does a good job, Greenberg well, they, does, to get his hand on the ball at the last second. And they showed us running tight, running formation, pass deep out of it on the free play. Now you have third down and short, back split behind Braun, and down. the handoff goes to Brian Hunnis. He cuts left, he may go all the way. He's to the five, into the end zone. Brian Hunnis from 26 yards out, touchdown. You gotta like Brian, Brian Hannessy getting a chance to run the ball. He's the guy, as we talked earlier, gets a lot of duty hitting linebackers, leading people through the hole. There he makes a sweet little move once he's through the line of scrimmage and scurries to the end zone, and West has got a big lead. 34 to nothing, and Yenshu will try to put the 35th point on. Brian Hannessy not only showed power getting through the line, then showed some speed, ran away from the secondary and absolutely tore into the end zone, 26-yard touchdown run. Yancha will attempt the extra point out of Snyder's hold. Snap good, place good, kick up, and the kick is perfect, and it's 35 to nothing. So with the score 35 nothing, you see the Doylestown Hero Card scoreboard. Let's take a quick break, we'll be right back. Prepared the slightest bit improperly, a dish of blowfish can be lethal. At Cote & Company, we like to think of any ill-prepared dish as tragic, which is why we carry all the things you need to do it right. Gunpowder mustard and olive spread, and pink peppercorns and garlic stuffed olives, and an exotic selection of goat cheeses and practically everything you need to make all your dishes to die for. Cote & Company, now serving prepared meals to go. Please call for business hours at 340-COTE. back in the third quarter with 5.35 to go in the third quarter. The Bucks have just put their second score on the board of the quarter. They take a 35 to nothing lead. Jeff Klein will kick off. And deep is uh, Brian Wolfgang this time, along with Kevin Solly for Tennant. Klein hits it. It's a line drive squibber. It's gonna be taken by an up back at the 25 yard line, they'll get it out to about the 40, and that may have been Julian Eichert on, the, on that uh, catch and run. It was. So Tennant will take over at their own 36 yard line. They've had fairly good field position in the second, in the second half, but haven't been able to do anything about it. Good tackle by Drew Kelly. Junior comes down, stays in his lane. The back really exploded upfield. 
Kelly stopped him in his tracks. Nice tackle by Drew Kelly. Special teamer, guard, defensive lineman, 11th grader, 5'10", 180 pounds. Good job. And Kevin Greenberg will remain in the game of quarterback for Tennant. He has the same running back, Zykert and Lizzie. And they are split behind him as he goes up under center on first down. Handoff goes to Eichert on the counter, and he'll get five, six, seven yards. Eichert, Julian Eichert, showing some good strength and balance, taking it out over the 40-yard line to about the 43-yard line. Called a second down and two, an eight-yard gain. We'll try to get in some of the names of some of the younger players getting a chance to play now for West. Into the game, number 11, Carl Schatzeneiter. He'll take over in the secondary for Jason Williamson, who'll come take a break. Also in Gavin McKay playing cornerback. Ralph Castillo now in the game for West. So Mike Petten now getting some of the younger kids in, trying to get them some reps on, on defense. Also in a Chris Felton, number 31. Overberger in motion for Tennant. And the handoff goes again to Eichert. He's got the first down, breaks out toward midfield, and he's brought down on the CB West side of the field after a nice game and a first down for William Tennant. They'll move the sticks to the 49-yard line of the Bucks with 4.43 to go in the third quarter. CB West with a comfortable 35-0 lead. Also into the game now, number 32, a Keith Schneider. So lots of substitution. We'll try to keep, keep you up on it, let you know who's in the game for West. Some of these guys don't always get a chance to have their name called. We'll do the best we can here to get everybody in. Tennant with a first and 10 ball at the 49 yard line, back split again. Wing left is Overberger. He's in motion now. And straight back to pass, nice block. Hit as he throws, though it was uh, Greenberg. It's a nice block put on one of the Buck uh, onrushers, but I tell you, they were just too quick in there again, and in on the play was Chris Phipps. Chris Phipps, also Tom Halp from his linebacker spot, number 12. It was Lizzie who picked up the block. That was Halp who came from his linebacker spot. Lizzie does a nice job, cuts him out, but nobody got Phipps, and Phipps takes Greenberg down for a uh, big play. Again, you say we're looking at the future of CBS football. And, of course, you're getting a lot of clean shirts on the uh, tenant side of the field, too. A lot of uh, new players in there as well. But, again, this is where you get your experience. This is why Coach Petten likes to do this. He's up. He's got the game in hand. We may have too much time here. He's got the game in hand, you've got to think. They're not going to come back and score 35 points in the last uh, 16 minutes and 9 seconds unless a major miracle occurs. But he wants to see what he can get from his younger players. He wants to try and get them worked in so that when they're ready to play, that they can contribute as well. Billy Lowe started this way. Ben Snyder started this way, coming in and uh, spelling uh, you know, the starting quarterbacks in years past. And this is the way you do it. Penalty against Tennant. We'll move them back five yards, make it a third down, second down, excuse me, and 15. Number 30, Ben Shea in the game for West. Back split, and off play action, Snyder rolls left, or excuse me, Snyder, Greenberg rolls left, throws a little dump pass, and it's incomplete. I think it's incomplete. No, they're gonna say it's a completed pass. Did, did you see what I saw? <laughs> Let's take a look at it again. Look at like this ball hit the ground. Well, here's Greenberg, he's trying to square his shoulders. Here's gonna come Shea, gives him a good stick. And that's a that's a gracious call by the official. Give it the completion. Either a gracious call or a great catch. Or a great catch. One of the two. At any rate, it makes third down and four yards to go after the 11-yard completion. Backs now in the eye behind Greenberg. Back to pass off a short drop, now rolling out, trying to get outside, and Phipps has got him again. Chris Phipps making a name for himself, 6'3", 185, only a sophomore. I got a feeling we're gonna hear from him uh, a lot in the future. Well, this could be an all-sophomore team. 
You had uh, Schatzenneider out there. You had Halp out there. He's a 10th grader. Schatzenneider, Halp, Phipps is a, Phipps. is a 10th grader. So they got a bunch of guys out there now that are fifth, or excuse me, 10th graders. Um, as you said, the future of CB West. Single safety on fourth down as a ball is punted away. I didn't mention today that the punt will we'll get this return here. As coming up and taking it was Carl Schack Schneider. I didn't mention the punter because Tom Clancy, also one of their tri captains on tenant, has done a real good job in this game as well. He had one real good punt in the second quarter where he pinned West down on the three yard line. It was a beautiful punt. And West will take over. Tom Hout now into the game. Dave Brown, a quarterback. It's hard to tell in the clean jersey when you have black shirts, but you see the numbers are all clean. Greg Emmons uh, comes into the game. Now Hop wants to call a quick timeout. And while we have the timeout, a reminder to get into the game this fall with Sportsline on Suburban Community Television. Hosted by a local broadcast veteran, Dan Taylor, call in live and talk game strategy with local high school and college coaches and sports experts, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Channel 9. Also remember to join Delaware Valley College this fall and winter for Del Val Dialogue, featuring college president George F. West in an informal series of conversations with community and business leaders. The program is presented in conjunction with the college's upcoming Centennial Celebration. That's Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Delaware Valley College, a century completed, a century ahead. Well, they had the chance to talk. They get the ball back. Dave Brown wanted to talk it over. They got a lot of underclassmen, as you mentioned. And just a reminder, the VHS uh, copies of all these and all other suburban community television sporting events are available. Call 345-5154 Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5, 5 p.m. Handoff, the pitch goes out to Ben Shea, who's in the game. a 5'8", 160-pound senior, and he'll lose a yard on the play. So they've got, they've got some guys in there who do the yeoman's work. They'll, they're the foreign team during the week. They'll take the job of, they, <laughs> the day Braun during the week takes the job of being Kevin Greenberg. Shea takes the job of being Julian Eichert. And that's why Bucks do such a great job, because they, they all work together. And the handoff goes to Hop. He'll get a little bit of yardage. You know what I? There's another interesting thing in this game. There have been no fumbles and only one intercept, two intercepted passes. And a very remarkably clean game as far as carrying the ball is concerned. Game of four on the play, make a third down, seven yards to go. The ball at the 31-yard line. Backs are in the eye. A man in motion, it's Greg Emmons. Pitch goes back to Schatzschneider. He breaks outside, takes it over the 20, the 35 to the 36-yard line. Will be short of the first down. Carl Schatzschneider, 5'9", 170-pound sophomore. Kind of a fourth down back type player. And it's fourth and two. It looks like they're going to go for it from here. Yeah, Brown's in the game, so they're going to go for it. Either they're going to try and draw him offside, or they'll just go straight ahead. Fourth and actually about one. Full house backfield. And the handoff goes to Haupt, and he looks like he's got it. Yeah, he's got it by the spot. First down as Haupt gets the first down. It's Tom Haupt, 5'11", 175-pound sophomore. Gavin McKay also in the game. McKay is 6'1", 180-pound junior. He's a split end. And we have come to the end of three quarters of play. Three quarters that have been all Central Bucks West. At the end of 36 minutes, 
It's 35 nothing. CB West leading as you look at our Doyles down Hero Card scoreboard. We'll be back with fourth quarter action. Don't go away. Now more smart moves in real estate from Coldwell Banker Hearthside. Hi, Chris again from Caldwell Banker. House hunting can certainly be exciting, but without the right help, it's a lot like being in the woods without a guide. One way to avoid all the confusion is with our Caldwell Banker Best Buyer Guidebook. Caldwell Banker wrote it just for home buyers. It helps you determine how much home you can afford and your possible monthly payments. There's a house hunting section that helps you keep track of the homes you visit, and in the financing section, there's information on estimated buyer's costs and financing methods. So before you go looking for a home, get your copy of our Best Buyer Guidebook. All it takes is finding your way to a Caldwell Banker office. Make your smart move in real estate by calling Caldwell Banker Hearthside for your free copy of the Best Buyer's Guidebook today. Eagles Peak Spring Water has been serving bucks in eastern Montgomery County since 1958. When you reach for the peak, you reach for the best. And for new customers only, mention this ad and receive two free bottles with rental or purchase of dispenser. Call toll free. For three generations, Barb Lynn Carpets has served the Bucks County area with a wide selection of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, featuring famous names like Karistan, Lees, and Cabincraft, and their large stock ensures quick delivery by their experienced installers. Barblin also stocks a complete line of Armstrong, Congolium, and ceramic tiles, braided as well as modern and classic oriental rugs, and a complete selection of wood flooring, plus the area's only full-service workroom for repairs and custom orders. When it comes to flooring, trust the name people have come to for 40 years, Barblin Carpets. What makes a great sports bar? A great sports bar has games, live entertainment, a satellite dish, happy hour, and of course, good food. A great sports bar is Rookie's Sports Bar and Grill, Doylestown. Bring your friends to Rookie's and play some pool or foosball. Catch all the games on Rookie's satellite dish and enjoy live entertainment Saturday nights. Stop in for lunch or dinner and choose from juicy burgers, cheesesteaks, and pizza, plus platters and hand-cut french fries. Rookies, a truly great sports bar one and a half miles north of Doylestown on Route 611, featuring 15-cent wings weekdays during happy hour. Back for fourth quarter action, Bronze pitches to Schott Schneider, and he'll get maybe a yard if that called a short and a half yard gain. As Braun pitched to Schott Schneider, but the Tennant defense was there. And Tennant with a lot of new faces in there as well. Mike Clayton there, Chuck uh, Yandora also in the game. And also, uh, Don Alberger, 6'2", 266 pound junior, big boy. Yeah, that's a big boy. Caught a gain of one, make it second down, nine yards to go, ball at the 39 yard line of CB West, just inside play of fourth quarter. Handoff goes to Schott Schneider. Schott Schneider drives forward to the 45 yard line. Good power run by Schott Schneider, who found the hole quickly. Moved through, it'll be a gain of about six, make it third down and three yards to go. Also in the game for Tennant, Darren Gross. Make that Gross. Darren Gross, 5'8", 164 pound sophomore. So they too are getting some young guys in the game. Third and three of the ball at the 45 yard line of West. And the handoff goes to Schott Schneider and he breaks over midfield for the first down. So Schott Schneider, after trying to find his sea legs, really running some good power. Breaks through a couple of tackles, gets a first down, moves the sticks, and CBS has a first down at the 10 and 49 yard line. Good young line, doing a good job, exploding off the ball. Schatzider just trying to find two, three yards at a crack, and it's a nice little drive that this young Bucks team has got going. First and ten. Backs are in the eye behind Dave Brown. Rolling left is Brown. He gets outside. No, he can't get outside. Julian Eichert, who will trap him for about a two-yard loss. 
But one of the things he does there, Braun, he does a good job. He sprints outside, but he doesn't change the ball to the outside hand, and we're going to see it on the replay here. Now watch, he's going to break to the outside, and we'll look forward to see where he's got the ball. He's got the ball at inside hand. He can't use that hand to defend that guy off, and he gets tackled. He has the ball in the other hand. He's able to stiff arm him and maybe even break the tackle. He got thrown down pretty hard, took a quick breather, and he's back, in the, he's back into the next play. But make it second down and 11. Coming out wide right is Gavin McKay. Single setback, double uh, slot formation to the right. Rolling right, Braun, he's got a great arm. He's got a man downfield, going for the ball, and making the catch for the touch. Did he get the touchdown? No. They're going to call him out down at the one-yard line. That was Gavin Mc McKay on the catch. Had a perfectly thrown ball. I'll tell you what, when we talked earlier about Braun's arm strength, he threw that ball a good 50 yards in the air. That was a beautiful pass, had lots of air under it. McKay ran under the ball, and a good saving tackle by the tenant safety. Saves the touchdown, but West is right on the doorstep on a maybe one foot yard, foot line. Well, a great quarterback in, uh, tonight and a great pass receiving. That was a great reception by McKay. And the handoff goes. And going in for the touchdown is Carl Schatzneider. Touchdown, make it 41 to the So as we get early in the fourth quarter, with 8.43 to go, Schatzneider with a one-yard run after the great reception by uh, Gavin McKay. And Yancher will come in to try to put the 42nd point on. Out of Snyder's hold. Snap good, the play's good, the kick up. It's true. And it's 42 to nothing. Once again, a reminder, there's a door. You see the fans, you see the, the cheerleaders there delighted. You see our Doylestown Hero Card scoreboard. A reminder, the game, card, game scoreboard is sponsored by Doylestown Hero Cards for all your sports cards and collectibles. As I mentioned before, VHS copies of this game and all other sporting events are available through Suburban Cable TV. Call 345-5154 Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And of course, you're watching suburban community television. Well, you got you, you got to you got to like the uh, little drive that Braun put together. He led a nice little charge there for the young Bucks. He put some some points on the board, and that's got to help his confidence down the road. Absolutely. Jeff Klein will kick off again. He's had a, a long evening. A lot of kickoffs. This will be his seventh. Hits it. Hard and true, it's taken down by Solly, who hands it off. Oh, the ball's on the ground. They pick it up, they tried the reverse. Solly gets outside, no, excuse me, that's Iker getting outside. He... I don't know what he did. <laughs> he either fumbled or tried to pitch it back. The ball went out of bounds, but they tried the reverse. The ball's on the ground, picked up by Eichert. He took it all the way out to the 40-yard line, and then did something with the ball, either fumbled or tried to pitch it back. And I don't know if we have a replay of that, but I sure would like to see it. Unfortunately not, so, but I, even if we did, it wouldn't make a difference, so that's that's the way it goes. At any rate, first and 10 for Tennant, and Kevin Greenberg remains in the game. Waiting for a running back to come into the game, that's Joe Gutierrez coming in, 5'8", 205 pounds, senior. Shotgun formation. Greenberg throws to Overberger. Overberger would have done well to drop the ball because he catches it for about a five-yard loss. Yeah, good play by Chris Felton, 31, in the game. For West, comes up from his defensive back spot. Does a nice job to wrap the arms and drop it. Let's take a look at this. Actually, this is actually an eight-yard loss. You see the rush coming on. Now, Greenberg is running for his life all night. Completes it to Overberger, who does the right thing, come back to the quarterback, but he's in the backfield. And it's an eight-yard loss, so now make it second down and 18 to go back to pass Greenberg. Goes over the middle, he has a man open. He 
getting close to the first down yardage on a well thrown ball. It's number 41, that's Kevin Katz. He's, uh, we've heard from him before. He's made a couple of nice catches in the game. Make a third down after that gain of uh, 16, make a third and two. Under seven and a half minutes to go in this ball game. West for the game well in hand, leading 40, 42 to nothing. And again, the shotgun is Kevin Greenberg. He's under a rush, and he's going to go down under the rush at number 53, and that's Jim Jaworski. I, I, got, a, I got a special story about Jim Jaworski. Um, his father, coach at Warrington AA, uh, Mom was a big supporter of the program. Now we're going to get a replay of uh, Jimmy Jaworski, and he also helped me last year coach our little Pee Wee team. There he is, Jimmy Jaworski, dragging him down. Good job. Now a fourth down, and they're going to go for it at fourth and eight. Rolling left, under pressure. Under pressure, brought down another great open field tackle, this time by Todd Kenny. Coming up from his D-back spot, 6'2", 170-pound junior, Todd Cunning. Todd Cunning brings him down, and the Bucks will take over on downs deep in, in Panther territory. And this has just been an absolutely, I mentioned at halftime, they weren't dominating, they're dominating now. Well, it, it, the last two plays, the, the offensive line for Tennant wasn't there. I, I, I don't know if they just have a lot of inexperienced guys on the line or the guys that are in there are just exhausted. Luke Maroney in the game, the quarterback. Six, pat, six foot, 185 pound sophomore. It's our first look at Luke Maroney. Is Maroney in? Let me see if they got Maroney in there. Let's take a look. You see the sacks uh, tonight. Tennant with two sacks, West with four. And they're gonna call a timeout. They wanna talk this over. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Good laugh. Visit your in-laws. That's stupid! Then come to Comedy Cabaret. The Comedy Cabaret proudly presents America's best new comedians. For the Comedy Cabaret in your area, call 345-JOKE. 345-JOKE. Barney says don't buy a car. Save money. Maintain your car. See Barney's for all your auto repairs or used auto and truck parts. Hotline service for parts not in stock. Barney's on Route 309 in Line, Lexington. Robert Grumreyer, proprietor. Luke Maroney in a quarterback for CUS pitches the ball back to Shat Schneider. Cuts inside a good block by Tom Howe. Breaks out of the open momentarily and gets inside the 15 to the 13. First down. And that's your sophomore backfield, folks. Maroney, a quarterback pitch to Shot Schneider, who followed a great kick out block by Tom Happ. Tom White, you gotta love it. I love those lead backs. They're tough to find. Kids that uh, really don't go in there for the glory. They just love to hit people. You gotta go in that line in that line and find a linebacker and put a hat on him. Halp has done a good job in his opportunities tonight, and we know Hannessy did a good job earlier in the game. Five and a half to go in the ball game. 42 nothing. The Bucks. The pitch goes to Shot Schneider around the right side. He's down to the ten. There's a flag down. This is probably going to come back. He's down to about the six. Let's see what the flag is. I probably may have some motion against West. Let's see. Uh, by the way, he's standing there. That's usually a, a penalty against. The offensive team, we'll see what we've got. It's a hole. So that'll move him back 10 yards. Lead block that time for West was Rory Ansley. Now in the game for West, number 22, Andy Fiore. And the ball is stepped off to the 23 yard line. It'll make it first down and 20 yards to go. You know, you try not to fawn over a team. And I, I know it's going to come across like I'm their biggest rooter. Fact is, this has just been 
a spectacular performance tonight. Pitch goes back to Schott Schneider, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Good tackle on, a, on the side of Tenet side, number 47. Andy Crow comes up from his linebacker spot and really puts a hat on Schatz Ryder. Watch this hit. He's going to stretch it out. Now watch 47 is going to come into your screen right here. Bang. Good stick. Ball placed at the 17-yard line. Third down and 14 yards to go. Backs in the eye. Hand up goes to Schott Schneider, and he is hit right at the line of scrimmage there on a good stopping tackle by Brian Wolfgang. Wolfgang's had a good, good game for Tennant tonight. And he's only a sophomore, 5'11", 178 pounds. He came up from his linebacking spot. He also has had playing time in the back offensive backfield. And you see him on that tackle. Good, solid play. Now we're inside. Four minutes to go in the ball game. And it's a third down. And still about 14, maybe 13 yards to go. Luke Maroney, a quarterback, hands it off underneath and getting some good yardage down to about the 10-yard line is Keith Snyder, 6'1", 210-pound junior from his fullback spot. Make it fourth down and about seven yards to go. And, of course, they'll go for it on fourth down. Wouldn't kick a field goal up 42 to nothing. Well, here's a chance for some of the younger guys to get a pass pattern. Now, I can't imagine up 42 to nothing that Mike would throw. There is no way this ball goes in the air unless it's fumbled. One fourth down, Maroney. Hands the ball off underneath, and it's going to be a touchdown. Oh, baby Keith Snyder. Well, that puts an exclamation point on it. Keith Snyder with a quick hand up, and Maroney showed great deception, tucking it into Snyder's gut, and nobody on Tennant saw him. He just waltzed into the end zone. Waltzed into the end zone from 10 yards out. Well, you got to love this as a, as a West player as a team because everybody's got a chance to play tonight. And I think, except for honesty, we've had different guys score. I'm gonna go for two. And he's in. Keith Snyder goes for, goes for two. That's, they, they got the half century mark. Let me raise a few eyebrows. 50 to nothing, and they went for two. I'm going to reserve comment on that one, Tom. Just to say that the score is 50 to nothing, West leading Henry. Well, a lot of people will talk that maybe it was unnecessary, but you know what? When you're playing another team and you've totally put in everybody you can put in, the other team still has to play. So you got to look at it from that respect. I'll reserve comment on it, Tom. Klein will kick off once again for CB West. Back deep, Brian Wolfgang. Hits it, and Wolfgang will take it at around the 15-yard line. Hands it off again to Julian Eichert around the left side. He's up over the 30, the 35, the 40. 45, cuts outside, he's knocked out of bounds to the 50. Had he been able to cut inside, he's gone. Yeah, he's had two good returns on the last two kickoffs. Good speed. And here Just we go. the last guy to knock him out of bounds. For six weeks every year at Shady Brook Farms, we let the ghosts and ghoulies run wild over a 300-acre vegetable farm. Once again this fall, they're back, and this time they brought friends. 